I keep hearing so-called progressive Christians and non-believers on social media trying to tell people that the Bible never condemns homosexuality. All right, let's see it. They'll say verses in 1 Corinthians and Leviticus were somehow mistranslations. If your translation of the Bible says the word homosexuality or the word homosexual anywhere in it, it is 100% a mistranslation. The ancient world had absolutely no concept of homosexuality as a sexual orientation in anything remotely approximating the way we understand sexual orientations today. And that understanding really developed since the 19th century when we came up with the idea of sexual orientations. The myths and the theories and the frameworks that they had anciently to explain sexual desire and where it came from and why it was directed where it was have absolutely no relevance whatsoever to anyone's sexual ethic today. Have you ever heard this lie? They'll say, no, the Bible only condemns pedophilia. It says that men shouldn't lie with young boys. Well, these claims originate from a documentary produced by a lesbian Christian titled 1946, The Mistranslation That Shifted a Culture. These claims don't originate in any documentary whatsoever. Uh, they go back at least 500 years to Martin Luther's translation of the Bible, and they may go back further than that. In that documentary, they claim that in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, seen above, that where it says homosexuals was a mistranslation. So rendering homosexuals for Arsenokite is 100% a mistranslation. It does not refer to all people who identify with a homosexual orientation. It does not refer to all people who engage in acts of same-sex intercourse. It doesn't say a word about women. It doesn't even refer to all men who engage in acts of same-sex intercourse. It only refers to men who take the active role in an act of male same-sex intercourse. And the word just before that is rendered effeminate, malachi, that refers to men who take the passive role in an act of male same-sex intercourse. And it's no accident that Paul has two different categories for the people who take these two different roles. They had no concept of a versatile role. Men either sought out the active role or men sought out the passive role. They didn't have an understanding of those who sought out both because their understanding of sexual desire and its motivations were entirely alien to our understandings of sexual orientation today. And these two different roles were understood to be motivated by entirely different impulses of different degrees of deviancy and acceptability within society. They say this because the author, Paul, used a word that had never really been seen before. That is absolutely not why they say this. Arsenokotai, which is actually just a combination of two Greek words, arson, meaning male, kotai, meaning lying, combining the two just means lying with a male. Speaking of lying, stop. So this creator betrays a rather mm, superficial grasp of a rather superficial approach to what is in reality a complex issue. And I think 1946 does a much better job of plumbing the depths of those complexities, even if I don't agree entirely with some of the conclusions at which they arrive. Uh, but this creator is not concerned with accurately representing this issue or with its complexities. This creator is concerned with boundary maintenance and some credibility enhancing displays, which is clearly demonstrated by their repeated attempts to delegitimize the faith of some LGBTQ plus community by the constant use of scare quotes in reference to it. Now, I want to conclude by pointing out that the interpretation of these passages and their leveraging as rhetorical weapons against the LGBTQ plus community, which has historically caused untold harm to individuals, to families, and to communities, is something one chooses to do. Nobody is compelled by the text to arrive at these conclusions or to deploy the text this way. These texts only have meaning and authority to the extent that we agree on what meaning and authority to assign to them. And that is overwhelmingly governed by our need to make these texts meaningful and useful to our communities today. We have already renegotiated away so much of what the biblical authors were trying to communicate, including so much of Paul's own sexual ethic, because it is no longer meaningful or useful to our communities today. It is our choice when we decide to stop finding meaning and utility in harming the LGBTQ plus community.